Well, I think that's what Putin was hoping for a sort of a quick, sharp strike uh, into the territory and to take it over. Uh, and things have gone very wrong. Three weeks in, uh, we've seen massive casualties on both sides, but particularly on the Russian side, we've seen the Russian military performing very poorly, certainly well below what we had all predicted. Uh, we've seen uh, not only tanks knocked out, but also tanks without fuel, uh, soldiers without ra rations, and I think we're all going pretty, pretty downhill. Uh, as it is at the moment, I think we're absolutely at a pivot. Um, we've heard the President of Ukraine say no to NATO. You know, that is one of um, Putin's key demands, and I think we need to be careful not to you know, appease him too much on this. But I think the next few days and weeks, uh, let's hope there is a peace. Um, but but I, I certainly am very wary about trusting Russian promises. And as they start to get into those cities, particularly Kiev, I think that's where we're going to see some really bad fighting. And if I can just do, do a, a bit of a plug, one of the things I am doing in Ukraine is trying to train civilians how to survive in this environment, um, particularly if Putin goes to chemical weapons, which I think he will do if he gets bogged down in Kiev. And uh, as we did in Syria, very successfully. How survivable is a chemical? How, Colonel, how survivable is a chemical weapon attack? If you know what you're doing, Eamon, it's very survivable. Um, and at the moment, I'm passing around leaflets that hopefully are getting to as many people as possible, telling them simple things. In a bombardment, you generally head down into the cellars. But for a chemical bombardment, that's the worst thing you do, and it's counterintuitive. But a chemical bombardment, you get pops, not bangs, if that's not being too simplistic. Also, if you run away from the, uh, from the chemical gas, whatever it is, and get to high ground, you're likely to survive. And the third thing is if you decontaminate very quickly, which could be as simply, simple as taking off your clothes, you're likely to survive. So I think on the face of it, most people think chemical attack that, that is history, but absolutely not if you know what you're doing. And we did this in Syria after the uh, big attacks in 2013. And I think thousands of people probably survived because of it. And the other thing to train civilians to survive is that, you know, if Putin knows that it's not going to have the effect that he hopes, hopefully he will be less likely to use these dreadful weapons.